Every day, millions of men go to work questioning their purpose and how to leverage their gifts for the advancement of God's kingdom. Join us as we hear stories from other men just like you and me who have discovered the answer and are willing to share some wisdom they've learned along the way. Gathering wisdom is like dropping pennies in a jar. Over time, our jars fill up and overflow into the lives of others. Welcome to The Drop. We're here with Stephen Field. Hey, Stephen, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. Uh, and sharing some of uh, your wisdom along your path. So first, why don't you tell us about yourself and uh, your current uh, family status? Yeah, so um, I, my, my name is Stephen Field. I'm the athletic director at Arroyo Grande High School. Um, I'm 34, almost 35, and uh, I'm, I'm married. I have two, uh, two little girls. Um, uh, Grace is, uh, is six, and Everly is four. And uh, they're, they're, I always say they're going on like 16 because they're just at it. <laughs> they're, they're, they're hyper, they, they like to have a good time um, and they keep us busy. Um, my, my, wife, uh, my, my wife's name is Megan. And okay. um, yeah, so we, we're just, those guys keep us real busy. I bet, how long have you and Megan been together? Megan and I have been together since, um, <laughs> since high school. We were high school sweethearts. Uh, we started dating uh, actually between our sophomore and junior year. And so we've been together ever since then. Uh, been married, we got married for the last 12 years. Okay, yeah. congratulations. Thank and you. what high school was that? Royal Grande High School. Okay, <laughs> and so you mentioned you're the AD. You're currently the athletic director of Royal Grande High School? Yes, yes I am. Yeah. Okay, and how long have you been in that position? This is my fourth year. Yeah, okay. so I was there for three normal years and one half COVID year so far. So. Okay, and uh, prior to becoming the AD at uh, Royal Grande High School, what did you do? I was a teacher. Um, I, I um, taught special education for uh, three, three years at Rugrun High School, and, um, and I, I was coaching. Uh, I was coaching track and football there, and um, our athletic director uh, announced that he was going to retire, and I didn't think anything of it. Um, I, I really didn't. I, I, I thought, oh, well, it'll be interesting to see who, who takes it, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, just kind of through through a pro really through a process of some of my some of my mentors um, putting the thought in my ear, um, then, it, then it started to grow and 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 um, and I kind of felt that it was the right thing to do. I, I felt that there was a there was a bit of a calling there that I didn't expect whatsoever. Um, never had any intention of of getting into into leadership or administration necessarily, and um, so I decided to go ahead and go through the process and and in preparing for. Uh, the interview and looking into things a little bit and and, um, and kind of what it would look like it it I, it, it, it kind of just fit things just kind of fell into place and so my understanding is the prior athletic director was there for a long time yeah so there was yeah. probably some expectation some pressure you yeah. fill in that role I, I would I would sense is that yes true? yes absolutely yeah um, he was there for uh, approximately I believe it was I believe it was 27 years just under 30 years um, he's it was his time at a Garden high school so um, or yeah, yeah, in the district, and most of that time was at a Reverend High School. So, and, and and we have a our athletic program has been very successful for a long time, and and um, so there was definitely a bit of pressure in terms of just kind of maintaining that the, those programs and the level of, of competition um, that we were um, used to used to having, okay. and um, so yeah, that that's that there was definitely some some pressure there to to keep that going. And how's it gone so far? Um, pretty good, I think. <laughs> okay. It's it's uh, my 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 goal. Maybe I shouldn't say this on camera. I'll record this, but my goal was not to let the ship sink. You know, keep keep it <laughs> afloat. The there down. was there was some real. There's there's great things in place, and 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 just yeah, let let it keep going. And um and I feel that we've been uh we've been able to to maintain that level, and, and also grow in some other areas that, that I wanted to uh to to develop and and, and move in. So what does an athletic director do on a daily basis, weekly basis? What does that look like? What does your job entail? That's a great question, and it really depends on the week. Um, no, it's, you know, one of the weird things about the athletic, uh, the athletic director position is, is, is most positions within the school district, you kind of have your area, right? And you kind of have your area responsibility. And for us, um, we're, we're kind of the conduit between, you know, people. People ask me what what an athletic director is, and I think the easiest way to describe it is I'm the principal of athletics. You know, so anything that happens within the athletic realm um, comes to me, mm -hmm. and 
And so what I was getting at earlier was one of the things is that that's unique in our situation is that we're, we have kind of our hands in, in a lot of different aspects and in a lot of different areas um, within, the, within the school and within the school district. Um, and so that, that it's always, you always have something interesting going on. There's always a new, a new challenge, a new fire, um, so some new problem you're trying to figure out. And uh, it, keeps it keeps it interesting. Is it your responsibility to hire coaches? Yes, it is. Yeah. So we we um, yeah we hire the coaches. We make sure that we have uh, our staffing. Um, our once our head coaches are involved, they're they're involved in, in hiring the rest of their coaches. But yeah, hiring coaches, getting them on, um, getting through the through the process, um, all the all the behind the scenes stuff that that um, that a lot of people are unaware of. Um, one of the weird things uh, about being the athletic director has been that you go from as a coach or a teacher, you know, your time is probably 80, 20 or 90, 10 students to adults. You're with mm -hmm. kids more. And one of the, one of the challenges for me really was you kind of flip that ratio mm -hmm. when you be, when, uh, in my role, you're, you're, you're working a lot behind the scenes with adults and less with kids, hmm. um, which has, uh, has, has been a little bit of a transition and, 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 uh, and, and a bit of a really kind of a challenge that I've had to work through because I've the reason you get into education in the first place was to be with kids you know um, but you're just you're still having that impact and effect it's just a little maybe might look a little different so when you took that role um, did you come in with uh, an idea of what you want to accomplish or how you want to do run um, the athletics program at Rio Grande High School did you have an, an idea of what that would look like for you yeah, yeah, I did. Um, again, I kind of mentioned earlier. I kind of joked about you know not keeping the ship afloat. Mm -hmm. um, don't don't let it sink. Um, and, and and I wasn't too worried about that. You know, we have we have really good people in place and um, and just really let, let them do their jobs and empower them. However, there was some things that I wanted to, I wanted to stress. Um, you know, uh, we we talk about being a, an education based athletic program and and what that means. Um, what the, my my interpretation of what that means and how I describe that to our staff is that we are we are looking to educate our kids in life. Not, I mean, we're just you know, rather than being in the classroom through teaching maybe English, where our classroom might be the court or the field um, or the pool, and um, and and we're using every chance that we can and different scenarios that happen you know within sport, different challenges that you don't you may not get in the classroom. Um, to to our goal is so that our kids can can be better when they graduate than when they came in and just help help mentor and guide them in the right direction. How has your faith impacted that and your ability to do that? Uh, tremendously. I, I don't, you know, I don't know that that would have been my goal without faith, you know, with, without, without, without God and without the calling. Um, maybe my goal would have just been to win and that's, that's not healthy, you know? <laughs> and so, um, it, it's, it's been, it's been tremendous. No, God, God's worked the ability to be in this role and, and, and be a man of faith and trust God and know that he's in control um, has been has been outstanding. The the fact that I can, you know, I mentioned a little bit ago the the role being a little different. Um, you know, even though you might not be be working directly with the kids, and the impact may not necessarily come directly from you as much. You know, you have the impact amongst the coaches and amongst the staff, and that's really an area that I've been trying to grow in recently. Um, and, and develop those relationships and strengthen those relationships with my staff and hope that the, there, there's something there, you know, God works through us in, in different ways and examples and, um, and really hoping that my staff can take that and bring it back to their kids, you know. Kind of trickle down effect, basically. Exactly, yeah. Um, so the, you, you mentioned the calling a couple times. And you, you also mentioned that earlier you never thought you'd be an mm -hmm. athletic director. You didn't come out to do that. As a young man, what were your goals to become? Um, I was an athlete, so um, most of my goals revolved around that. You know, um, my unfortunately, uh, this was, I wish I can go back and change a couple things, right? But um, my goals revolved around athletics and, and, and academics and stuff kind of were secondary for me. Um, but what I found was, uh, even, even, even while I was in high school still, I enjoyed working with the younger kids. Um, and so when I, when I graduated from Royal Grand High School, I played, I was, I played football at Cal Poly. And so football is during the fall. Well, during the spring, that very first year, I started coaching track, um, in which I competed in, in high school. And so I would come back and coach, coach during the spring uh, in the afternoons at the school. 
And so I did that over the course of, of uh, my time at Cal Poly. And what I found um, was I loved working with kids. I absolutely, I loved, I loved working with them. I loved coaching them. Um, I, I took, for me, um, I took the mentor aspect very seriously. I had, uh, I was very blessed in my life to have coaches that, um, that, that really filled a, a father role, um, father figure role for me. And so to be able to, to be able to turn that and, and, and hopefully gift that, gift that or, or be that for somebody else, you know, um, was, was really, I took that very serious. And, um, for me, once I made the connection and, and it took some of my mentors helped me out a little bit after I graduated college, um, I, I really didn't know what to do. I, I was an ag business major. Um, I was, uh, which is a very vague, um, a vague major, a vague area. And so I, I didn't really know where, where to go or what to do. And, and I was still coaching. And once, once the connection in my brain was coaching is teaching and teaching is coaching, you know, essentially you're, you're mentoring and you're helping kids and you're, and you're trying to empower them. Um, I realized right away that, that that's probably where the, the direction that I was going to go. Um, kind of told God like, all right, let, let's roll, let's roll with this, you know? So, um, all of a sudden, miraculously, there was a position open at the school, um, exactly at that time to be hired as, as an aide, um, basically a teacher's aide, um, in special education, which was an area that I was able, I was interested in. And so I thought, you know, the, let's go ahead and take this. Let's, let's take a step of faith. Let's see how it goes. And, um, and, and if it goes well, then I'm going to, I'm going to start my credential. Just got the job started and within, I want to say about a month I was enrolled in the credential program. You so, knew. I knew it was, it was obvious. Yeah. Okay. I was, it, it was where I needed to be and I had fought it for a little while. Um, and, and then it just, God just kind of made it happen, you know? So my understanding of your background is you're a really successful athlete. You were, you were a D1 level football player as well as a, a track star, correct? Yes. Yeah. And so um, I imagine growing up as a teenager and even as a kid, you spent a lot of time on the fields working that. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time, that ended. Yeah. And was that hard for you? Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, it was, it was quite hard. Um, I, I had mentioned talked about how I put a lot of stock into um, my athletic career. And um, when that came to an end, I was, I, I, I was, uh, I had a successful college career and being very undersized for my position, I still thought that there was, I was going to get an opportunity um, to try out for an NFL team or, or something. And I, I by no means had the expectations that I was going to go be an NFL star, but I, I wanted the opportunity. And felt that if I had it, you know, like any athlete thinks, mm -hmm. if I have the opportunity, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. And that never came, you know, that, 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 that never quite came. And, and frankly, I was, I was married. Um, I was married in my last year of college and, um, my wife graduated early. She had a career already. And all of a sudden I'm sitting on the couch with, uh, with no job or, or eventually working a dead end job. And my dreams are nothing, nothing's working out the way that I planned, you know? Um, the only thing that I was doing for a while was working, like working a couple dead end jobs and coaching. And, and like I talked about, that's when all of a sudden those, those doors started opening and praying and going through the process and really, you know, going through some depression and, and feeling like a failure. And, um, and I'm a, you know, I'm a man and I've, I've always, I've been successful and I've always made it happen. I've been able to work my way out of these things. Um, you know, and then all of a sudden to have that door close, um, kind of got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit because I think it's really important for a lot of younger athletes who kind of put all those eggs yeah. in that basket um, and the ball will stop bouncing at some point in time, usually. Yep. It's uh, it's unusual for a person to have a 20-year career in sports, at least playing anyways. So do you feel like you were prepared for the ball to stop or you know, did it come abruptly? It came, it came pretty abruptly. I knew that there was, an op there was a chance that it would stop, but I... I really just thought it was going to happen, and so I was not prepared. Um, you know that there was there was not I didn't have the correct balance in my life. Um, you know, and I had put way too much stock in the athletics. So, having dealt with this kind of abrupt stop to your athletic career and maybe the disappointment that brought, is there anything you would tell yourself uh, or prepare yourself for that moment looking back? 
Absolutely. Um, one one of the things that I've I've had the uh, the, the privilege of, of having this exact conversation with with several of uh, several of my athletes over over the, over the past several years is um, the imbalance that I did have uh, and putting putting so much of who I was as a person as a young man um, into athletics or, or into whatever it is um, what was unhealthy and if I wish that I you know I could have gone back and had a better balance and specifically put some more time and energy and focus into into my academics um, you know because you can you can do well in the field and if you don't have something to, to fall back on um, or you don't have those plans in place or, or the ability to to, to pivot you're gonna be stuck you know so after it ended you did mention that you went through some depression I know it, it's hard for a man especially kind of an alpha guy do you want an athlete to to admit having maybe gone through depression um, it, it, are you comfortable talking about that now or at the time did you recognize that you were actually depressed yeah, um, I, I, I kind of thought I was just in a funk you know I, I don't think that I would I would say that I was you know, in a full-blown depression, um, or that, that that I was dealing with the, with quite what I was, but um, but it, it's it's revealed itself over time, you know, um, and yeah, I mean, really, just through, I mean, really through the grace of God and through through being able to um, to to have some people speak into my life and and uh, be able to accept accept those things and 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 pr and have the prayer and. Um, was able to kind of pull out of it and, and move in a different direction, you know. And so, um, talking about that, your faith really was uh, really pulled you through that at some point in time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, just having, like I said, there was there was some men there in my life. There was there were a couple moments that um, specific moments. Uh, one, one time uh, we were at a Thanksgiving with my family, um, and, and frankly, I, I didn't see I didn't see this this side of my family very much. And um, we were all my it was, my uncle was a pastor. And we were in his church and, and worshiping and and um, and he just he came over and started speaking into me and about exactly what, some stuff that was going on and and I just broke down um, I just I just broke down in tears and, and and it was it was as if it was as if at that point it was it was about as audible I think as as, as God could speak to you you know I mean it, he obviously there wasn't there wasn't the God talking down from heaven but through my uncle um, talking, talking to me, and um, essentially, this weight's lifted off your shoulders. It's time to move. You know, it's time to act. There's other things for you to do, um, and and that was a huge pivot point in my life. Um, and because after that, you know, doors started opening, and, and I, I was able to surrender. Did you feel like at that point you could fulfill your calling and recognize your calling? Yeah. At your next stage in life, which is to teach and to coach. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. To, to start. and that was that was at that at that time. It was right before that that it was, excuse me. It was right after that that um, you know I had got went into and got the job at the school and um, and was able to start uh, start start the credential program and start teaching. So tell me about your your faith background. So uh, how did you come to know uh, the Lord? My faith background. Um, I, I've I heard this I heard this example actually when I was a kid, and for some reason it always stuck with me. Um, I've heard the term called pop, popcorn faith. You're up and down, right? So that's that's kind of where, where my background was as a child growing up. Um, I have a I have a, a unique unique faith background. I have um, one side of my family is predominantly pastors, um, and the other side of, of my family is predominantly um, uh, deals with a lot of addiction and 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 some some mental health issues and and um and faith faith is not necessarily at the forefront and so um i had you know part of part of you know going to spend time with, with part of my family and and being my mom my my mom raised me in the church and made sure that i was always at church um you know we were always we were always plugged in somewhere um you know, we may not have gone to everything or been, you know, been super involved in everything, but there was always, we were always going to a church. Um, I remember times, you know, being, basically being dragged out of bed, you know, and, and going to church and as, as, a, as a kid. And, and because that faith was instilled, because I had the, those experiences, no matter how far I may have gone off path, I knew, I knew where I needed to go. I knew, I knew what God was. I knew, I knew what faith was. I'd had some of those experiences and, and, and when, when the time was right, I can come back to it. 
So when you, you said popcorn faith, what did that look like in your life? It was interesting. Um, you know, I, I've, I've always been able to keep fairly grounded. Um, but there was just time where, you know, as, as a kid, and I'll, I'll specifically focus on more maybe adolescence, where the world grabs you, right? And you want to, you know, we're con all of us are constantly being influenced by everything around us, and, and the world wants to pull us in every, every possible direction. And um, so I would go, and I would... I, I would I would go down that path, or, or I would I would follow one of those pool you know directions of being pulled in, um, and then somehow come back, you know. And, and God, God never, God never, there, there was never that call was never not there. There there was never, um, you know. I, I knew where I knew where I needed to go, um, and so so it was very up and down, which therefore kind of led to a little inconsistency um, in in my life. But um, I did have. I did have a good foundation to come back on and um, people that I, I knew I can go to um, and pray and, and get prayer for from. When do you feel like that last pop happened in your life where you really stepped into it and now it's like, I'm here and that, this is my lane? Yeah. Um, really, I think for the, to, to be honest, for the last, for the last several years, um, I, you know, I have have two two kids, uh, the six year old and, and the four year old that I was talking about earlier, Grace and Everly. And, um, new life was my home church growing up. Um, you know, we were never super active, but when my kids started going back to preschool, we had been kind of off and on attending and, and maybe trying some other churches in the area as well. And when our kids went back to, to new life preschool, um, we kind of went all in, you know, and we knew we needed to get back and God had been working in our lives for a while. But we still were kind of not, we, we didn't have a home church. And when my kids, when my kids went back to school, we said, we're all in, you know, and we started um, really surrendering and committing our lives to, um, to God's will and to being a part of the church and, and to growing our family in faith. So for the field family, what does that look like to be all in? <laughs> um, surrender, to be in alignment, to be, um, to be in God's word, um, to, to lead your family in the right directions to be able to have the discernment to say this is wrong and we're not going to let this in our home and um because despite my kids being six and four the de the devil's got a way of sneaking things in right and so um so for us we stay in the word we have talks of faith we pray um we talk we talk about things we talk about what um, you know, what something bad that the kids may have seen on a show or something looks like and why it's not right and um, worship together. Um, you know, we, we, uh, we turn Alexa up and, and get, some, get some praise and worship going to, together as a family sometimes. And um, church is a priority for us. You know, we, 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 all, we all have those, those times where we don't wanna, we, we wanna wake up and sip our coffee and not go in or whatever. And, and for us, that's, that's no longer an option. We're, we're at church. Um, unless we can't be and and um, uh, and but uh, yeah and I understand mentorship's an important uh, a part of your walk as well. My understanding is you have a mentor and you and based on your position, you are a mentor as well mm -hmm. uh, to students and the staff that work for you. Talk about uh, what that looks like for you to be a mentor and a mentee. Yeah, uh, I'm a firm believer. I've I've always thought that in order to lead, you need to be led, and um, you know the the you. you so, um, so, so for, for me to have, to have a mentor in my life, I, I haven't always had, um, strong faith mentorship, um, as I was growing. And so, um, to have, to have our, my mentor in my life has been, has been a big experience so far. Um, you know, we haven't been doing it for real long, but we've created a great relationship, a great bond. Um, you know, I've been able to go to, go to him with some problems and some, and ask some questions and, and we've had real talks together and, and have prayed. Um, and, and is, is kind of, I feel has given me a bit of a foundation and, and somebody to be able to rely on, um, for, for faith, um, faith type questions or, or, or just have a man of God there, you know, um, and how that looks on the flip side. Uh, I, I think that the biggest thing, you know, the, the, the biggest, the greatest way to lead is by example. And so f to be able to be a man of God and act and say, you know, to be able to, to have breath to speak the words of God and, and, and be that example, be able to have feet to walk in God's path, um, 
it, it exemplifies and people are going to notice it. It's, 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 it's almost impossible because you're different. You know, if you, God's ways are not of this world. And so if you're walking in God's ways, you're going to stand out. It's going to be different. And my prayer, my biggest hope for me um, is that, 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 that is able to be seen and that people around me being in public, public education makes it a little tough mm -hmm. at times to, to, uh, to, to live out, um, the way that maybe you want to do some things or say some things. Um, but that's what being, being the example is the biggest part. Yeah. I was going to say, it must be a challenge being in a public school where I'm sure there's all kinds of boundaries that are, are a challenge to cross. Um, how does that look like, uh, to, to lead by example and, and to be different, to be salt and light? What does that look like, uh, being an AD at, at Arroyo Grande high school? How do you accomplish that and how do you prepare for that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I think one of the things that I've, I've always, I've, I've, I've always struggled with, um, up until recently is, is what, what's, what's God's plan? What's, what do I need to do? What's next? Like there's all, you know, but, but the reality is, is that God has us in place in a, in a place where, where he wants us, you know? And so we, we have, there's an opportunity to serve. There's an opportunity to be, to be salt and light, um, no matter where you're at. And so, and so to, once that sunk in, it's almost like some anxiety of what am I, what am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, I, I know that I'm in the right place, but what's the next thing that God needs for me to do? And it's, it's the be salt and light. It's to love, it's to, to love people around you and to be able to, to let that be uh, flow out, out of you, you know? And so, um, so, so, uh, that's, a, sorry, I kind of got lost. <laughs> yeah, you're good. You're doing great. Um, how did you, um, reconcile that in your head? that you knew uh, as, as someone that's forward thinking, hey, you know, in athletics early on, it was the next thing, mm -hmm. the next level. I'm going to get to the next level. At what point in time did you reconcile that, that this is the spot I'm at, this is my calling, and I just got to take comfort that and do my job now? What was it that um, you would share with somebody that, how do they recognize that? And just to, just to be uh, present where they're at. You know, just... For, for for me and, and the biggest thing the biggest thing that I would tell somebody else is is just being in God's word. I mean, I know that that is that might sound very vague, but you know, God God speaks in um, in different ways, and and um, sometimes it's it's a it's a person as I mentioned earlier speaking directly into you, um, a, a, you know, and sometimes it's it's just it's, you know being tugged on your heart. Some, something's just just itching, you know. Um, and it, and it just won't leave your, your mind, um, and, and being grounded and staying in God's word for me, really the peace, um, and the realization of, of serving where you're at, um, you know, it just, just kind of the, the peace of that came and has continued, um, over the past several years of being consistent in God's word and, and, and seeking, seeking God's presence. How are you in God's word every day? Do you have a plan? How do you intentionally get in his word? Um, I, I don't, I don't have a plan. Um, actually recently, uh, I've, I've over the last, frankly, since COVID hit, um, I've been consistently in the word more than ever. Obviously there's more time. There's, you know, there, there's, you know, priorities kind of shifted a little bit. And, um, however, recently, uh, a group, my, my Bible study, the men in our, in our, our Bible study, have uh, have a little account accountability system going right now with being in the Word, and there it doesn't matter. You know, there's no reading plan. It doesn't matter exactly what you know what it is, but um, but we we text each other and let each other know that we've we've, we've got our reading in for the day, and, and we talk about it a little bit when we meet. Um, but yeah, so talk about that a little bit. I mean, besides your relationship with your mentor and then the people you mentor, you're in a Bible study. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm in a Bible study. That was a that's been a big, uh, I, I'm, I'm a little introverted. Um, and for, for me, that was, uh, that was kind of a, a, a step of faith, uh, a little bit to, to kind of go ahead and, and, and join this. And I had been praying and I felt it on my heart for a while that, that there was, you know, that there, there's a little more here. There's another step there. There's, there's some social, um, things we need to do and, and get, 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 get together in a group and, and, um, organically, uh, it's funny how this work organically, God kind of just put a couple of, of families that were all in about the same boat. Our kids are about the same age, um, kind of going through life together, the same, the same stages of life. And so, um, to be able to have those people to, to talk to and 
and go through and the um and, and work together and you know the right now we meet together as a group but we also do something separate the men and the women um do something separate together and so to have, have that sense of accountability and um and someone you could talk to about about the same challenges of life and and faith has has been a big role how important is it in your walk it um it's it's very important um it's being connected somehow some way right so whether that's through uh however that can be then there's there's many different avenues that uh, and ways that that can happen through the church but um, whether it's a mentor whether whether it's a small group um how, however that is it, you, just being connected somehow um it, it, i think is vital so uh steven uh, we've been talking for a few minutes here and i noticed you mentioned your mom brought you to church mm -hmm. and it was an uncle that was a pastor um uh, was your father present um was he did he make an impact on your walk and where you are today yeah, no, that's a good question, and and it's it's not a it's not a straightforward answer. Uh, my parents were divorced um, when I was young. I believe I was going into second grade, um, and so, and so I did. I so so my mom was was single. Um, I was raised by a single mom all, all the way through. Um, I did see my dad, and I, and I had a relationship with my dad, and and my dad um, did have a, a strong faith background. Um, I mentioned my, a lot of my family was pastors, and and my grandfather was kind of the uh, the patriarch of, of that and, and and so my dad had had a strong foundation um, we, we didn't see each other a ton um, and and so that that was kind of that was a void that was there um, and, and my dad and I have always stayed stayed close um, or at least have, have talked and um, and have a good relationship and, and recently we've we've been uh, really continuing that and, and, and building that even stronger so that's been that's been great. Um, but I was raised in a single, in a, with, with a single mom. Okay. And so uh, has your walk allowed you to look at your father differently or being a father allowed you to look at your father differently? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's all, there, there's, there's things that we can all um, maybe look at and be, be, pr be critical of our, of our parents in some, some way, um, shape or form. But um, for, for, for those of us that have kids realize that it's hard <laughs> and it's not easy and that we make mistakes on constantly and so it it has it, it has been able to help me uh work on some of those things and and, and be able to um to maybe forgive and and and, uh, and and look past some of those issues okay um so it sounds like you have this fully ingrained all in christian life right now that's what it sounds like and it sounds like god just lined it up boom 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 is that uh, an accurate uh, representation of kind of how all these things, these modalities to stay connected to God happened in your life? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I think for me, one of the biggest things, um, no, clearly the biggest, the, the biggest thing that I've learned lately is the littlest step of faith, the littlest thing, no matter what you think it, how, how, how small it might be. Um, but we all, we all, I should say we all. I, I have consistently fought um, things, no matter how small. I, I've I've you know hid behind self doubt or fears that I've had, or or being an introvert and not putting myself out there. Um, but those, those have all been been small obstacles for me. And so just you know something as small as um, joining, going to the men's group. That the, you know the Zoom the Zoom men's group was the first uh, the first men's men's group that I joined. But um, you know, taking that step out, or or um, you know, joining a small group, or having a conversation with some guys that that maybe I normally would have just avoided, um, you know, or you know, but if you take it, the littlest step, the littlest step or action for, from you, if you feel that it's there, do it. You know, if God's pulling on your heart, if, if if God's speaking to you somehow, and you just respond, no matter how how small it might be, you know, we as men always think that there's something bigger and better, and and that that, that we've got to strive toward. And, and there's a path to get there and there's, God's got a way for you to, to do it, but you have to take a step, you know? And so whatever that step is, don't shy away from it. Um, follow it, take us, take a step in faith and trust God that there's, that there's a bigger plan. Um, so if looking back, you know, 15, 20 years, uh, if you were gonna speak to a younger you or a, a young man that's, you know, focused on athletics and, you know, next step, next level, next mm -hmm. level, what kind of advice would you impart so maybe some of the challenges you had, you can kind of sidestep. 
Yeah. Um, I would, uh, I would definitely, I would, I would definitely encourage, encourage people, um, encourage young men, young women that are, uh, are being pulled in, in, in so many different directions to it. It's okay to be different. Like you don't, you don't have to follow the world. You don't have to do what, um, what, 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 what maybe those around you think is right. Um, don't, don't be afraid to, to take a step of faith. Don't be afraid to, to take an action step. Um, you know, let, be, be in touch with, be in touch with, with, in somehow, some way be connected without proper alignment, without proper alignment under God, you can't, you, you won't, you won't, you won't be acting right. You won't be, you, you won't be moving in the direction you need to. You need to stay aligned and that there's lots of different ways to do that, but you somehow, some way you have to, you have to get the word of God. You have to get the word. You have to, you have to be involved in, in receiving the Bible, God's word somehow. Um, stay connected. Don't be afraid. Um, don't let the, don't let the fear in. Don't let the devil talk to you. Um, stay grounded. You kind of smirked a little bit when you said, don't let the devil talk to you. What does that mean? Actually, I was kind of, I felt like I was saying a bunch of different, a bunch of different things. You know, honestly, I just, there's so many different, um, I just feel for our kids, you know, be, being in be, today and, and, and seeing, um, all the different directions that our kids are being pulled in it, it, you know, your, your, your phone, for example, I mean, you can, you can never be disengaged and that's, that's something that's just pulling um, constantly pulling your attention, pulling your, pulling you away, um, from, from what might be right in front of you, you know, or, or you can't, you can't hear God talking to you or, or, or tugging on your heart in a certain direction if you don't give yourself a chance to. And so there's just so many sneaky ways that, that the devil works. And, um, and I just fear that there's, there's too many, there's so many distractions. Um, you know, so I pray to just that our, that our kids will be able to take a step back and, and stay grounded and let people speak into their lives and and um, stay connected, stay aligned. Hey, Stephen, thank you so much for your time. You and bet. thank you for the difference you're making in people's lives. Appreciate it. Thanks, brother.